So a couple of weeks ago I posted my first ever teacher vlog and some of the feedback that I've been getting from you guys is so lovely, so constructive and something that a lot of people keep telling me is you're an international school teacher, you should be focusing on that, that should be your niche, like you should be making more videos talking about that. So I decided to post that again on social media and ask if you guys had any questions about teaching internationally. Anyway, I woke up this morning and I checked on YouTube and I had some comments asking me questions about teaching internationally. So I thought I would kickstart vlog number two with a little Q&A about international school teaching. For anyone who does not know, I am a school teacher and currently I work in Hong Kong. So when I qualified as a teacher, I worked for three years in the UK before flying out to Hong Kong and that's where I've been for two years now. Okay, so the questions that I've been asked are from a girl called Tara and she has commented on my first teacher vlog video. Did you find your current job through an agency? If so, how did you find the process? I actually found my current job on the website TES, which I'll list down below in the description. And I think that's probably the most common way that people find jobs abroad. My experience with the agencies weren't very positive because I would email them and I would say, right, I want a job working in Hong Kong. I want to work with children. And I would get hundreds of messages from them saying, we found your perfect job. You're gonna be teaching adults in Sri Lanka. I would be like, okay, well that's lovely, but that's not what I want. They'll sort of send you hundreds of messages and they'll call you. As soon as you sign up for an agency, they're kind of, they're, they're on you. They know that you want to move. So they're trying to convince you. They're like, oh, you could get paid double to work out here in Dubai. So I would say if you aren't too sure where you want to move, then yeah, the agencies are probably fantastic because they will tell you, you know, what's available and what the best deals are. But if you're like me and I was like, I want to move to Hong Kong, that's where I want to go. It was a little bit tricky because I would wake up in the mornings and I'd be excited checking my emails or have any schools got back to me. And I would get messages from people and I would check them and it would say, oh great, you've got another offer in uh, Shanghai. And I know that for some people that would be amazing because there are a lot of teaching jobs available, especially international schools. So for me to keep reading that was like, oh, again, like, you know, a lovely offer, thank you so much, but I knew I wanted to move to Hong Kong. You can go to international school job fairs, which are really popular. I know they have them, they had them in Manchester where I was, they have them in London. I actually had a, a Skype interview and I secured the job. So considering I went to interview somewhere in London as well, I would say that that route was a lot easier, but you have to do a bit of both, I think. You have to be really open to sort of take opportunities if you're considering moving to a different country. How do you manage the inevitable language barrier, both in school and in the public? My first vlog, I did mention it's really tricky because when I get the bus in the morning, I want to talk to the bus drivers because they're so friendly, but I don't speak any Chinese. It is tricky sometimes, but I would say that I'm really privileged to speak English because lots of people out here, they speak English anyway. And if there is a language barrier, you just have to <laughs> mind what you want, be friendly, be respectful, and you can get around quite easily here. I know if you were to get a job in another country where English isn't as widely spoken, you might have to be a bit more able to adapt to the language, but for me personally, it doesn't really get in the way of my day-to-day -day life. What made you decide to start start teaching internationally and do I envision myself staying out and working internationally long term? I moved abroad because I was working in the UK and I had a friend who moved abroad and she told me you can get paid a lot more to live in Hong Kong and the lifestyle is really good and you might find the work-life balance is easier. The work is still tricky as I explained in my first vlog, like it's never easy. Teaching children is never easy no matter where you go in the world. You're always going to have challenges whether that's the children, the families, uh, the lifestyle that the children lead and you still have to engage them, you still have to motivate them and inspire them but I do find there is a slight balance and I do find I'm able to manage my time a little bit easier out here maybe the work feels more purposeful sometimes and I know that the UK you're swamped with paperwork quite a lot I don't find there's quite as much of that out here like there's still some so the expectations are still high I don't envision myself living here forever because I'm just too far from my family I miss them too much I do see myself embracing more international opportunities thank you so much to Tara for her questions and I hope that's given you a little insight into what being an expat teacher living in Hong Kong is like. Okay, so let's get back to the vlog and I will show you a little bit of my day starting on Monday.
Hi everyone, good morning. Welcome to my second vlog. I've just got into school right now. I've not even taken my bag off. Um, I'm actually in a bit of a rush today, so I'm just gonna briefly say hello and welcome to the second vlog. Today is a really busy day in school. We've got a staff member's birthday, so I've got a cake downstairs waiting. He's got no idea. <laughs> and also, I've got lots of things planned for the children. You might remember if you checked out the last vlog that I left things kind of on a bit of a cliffhanger. I was talking about the curriculum that I teach and how it related to ancient Greece and uh, civilizations and things like that. And um, last week, we did an amazing, amazing lesson. It was all about ancient Rome and uh, battles and civilizations. And the children made these amazing shields. I'm actually going to put a little clip of the shields in now. Okay, so I drew the circle actually. I drew the circles. I gave them a template if they wanted to use it for the wings, but they had to draw around it. But everything else on here is completely the work of the children. My children, they're in year three, so they're like seven years old, and I'm really super impressed. They were so proud of them. Making them was one of the greatest things that we've done. And after that, we did this incredible lesson where I went outside and we learned about battle formations from Rome, and the children were trying the battle formations. I was firing like invisible arrows at them. And I think I might actually put a clip of that in as well because you can't see the kids' faces. And to be honest, it was one of my proudest moments as a teacher. <laughs> think of that yeah I've had so many parents emailing me saying that the children loved the lesson that they went home and they wanted to do it again and they were practicing at home and telling their brothers and sisters about it now that we've done this practical activity I'm kind of hoping that I can get some really good writing out of them I'm hoping that I can do some instructional writing some recounts diary writing that kind of thing because I think they all believe that they're Roman soldiers now so <laughs> I'm just going to roll with it. Okay, I'm going to leave you now. I'm going to go get my work done, have a good day, enjoy spending time with the children, and I will check back in later on. We also finally finished backing these pots, so I've got them on display now. Children love them. They come and stare at them. They do some great work, my year threes. This is part of the curriculum that we teach. It's the inquiry cycle for PYP. If anyone else teaches this uh, curriculum, let me know. It's something that I really enjoy doing. Right now, our central idea is all about civilizations and I'm enjoying it a huge amount this one it's amazing I'm safe the children can't get me today <laughs> okay it's break time right now so the children are outside but I just had to grab my camera really quickly because I just I didn't give them any instructions I just told them right you've got to build me a pyramid some of them oh damn sorry some of them are really good they managed to get their head around like the layer structure but some of them I had to give a little bit more help to this one um the team that were making this one they counted it so like methodically they had they had like the idea of the number at the bottom and then like decreasing the number each. after we made the pyramids we just watched on minecraft there's um a really good video of someone who's like trapped inside a pyramid and they have to go through the little trap doors and travel through so yeah i was really happy with that really good lesson lots of good uh, maths and shape learning all thanks to the internet <laughs> Okay, it probably looks like I'm escaping school right now, but I'm not. <laughs> um, my school has put some training on for me, and it's in a school that's just around the corner, so I've grabbed this giant umbrella, <laughs> and I'm going to head there now. In international schools, it's really common to sort of visit each other and learn from different teachers, so I'm really happy that my school is sending me. The weather in Hong Kong is so unbelievably unpredictable. About an hour ago it was sunny we were outside the children were playing and now it's chucking it down with rain in the space of an hour it's gone from glorious to absolutely horrendous teachers do so many strange things during the day <laughs> i think i know the way yeah look at the weather now it is absolutely stunning it's beautiful the sun is out it's shining hong kong is just so unpredictable i have this giant ridiculous umbrella with me and I do not need it. Take me to the beach, I would go to the beach right now. Okay, so I've just finished work and I've got everything done that I needed to do. I had a quick meeting all about 
books and resources and stuff for the school so going through things that we might want to buy for next year so that's all done now which means it's time for me to go so I'm going to walk now take the same route that I took in my last vlog and I'm going to go into Causeway Bay if anyone's familiar with Hong Kong will know it's extremely busy but I'm going to be meeting Ryan there we're going to check out a few little office spaces um, where you can pay to rent a couple of hours workspace and just see what it's like and you know see if it might be somewhere that we want to use in the future for some for teachers project stuff I don't know if it's gonna rain or shine I honestly just can't even judge Hong Kong today I think I'm gonna need an umbrella and my sunglasses I'll see you in Causeway Bay anyone who doesn't know I'm a massive Pokemon fan I have a card collection worth I'm gonna guess like 500 pounds maybe more I've been collecting for years I used to play in tournaments and I actually won a tournament once so fun little fact about me <laughs> I see up there Snarlax snoozing you can choose only one who would you choose I know who gets my vote Okay, so I've just come to find Ryan, and we've gone to our favorite place for food. It's Poke. Pokey? Pokey? Okay. Okay. <laughs> we love this place. The lifts in Hong Kong take hours. If you've got very tall buildings and only two lifts, it takes about half an hour. What floor do you live on? Uh, seven. Not too bad. Seven? Yeah. I live on the 17th, but there's a child in my class that lives on like the 68th or something. <laughs> We got pokey, which is like deconstructed sushi. Yeah, and we're gonna go hang out in a study space. Okay, I've not been here before, let's check it out. Let's go on. Little snack area. Do you like the look of these? How high up are we? Show me where your flat is. My flat is just behind these big orange buildings. <laughs> oh, can't, can't see, see it. it. <laughs> where are we going? <laughs> oh, wow, this right. Oh my goodness. I present Hong Kong on a very misty day. I've been asked recently on my blog to ask Ryan some questions about international teaching, so you're happy to answer them? Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm ready. I'm just wondering, Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> what is your number one thing about teaching internationally? Um, I think I'm really lucky with the school that I'm at, that we have a lot of technology and a lot of things that I'm really into, so we've kind of got our own makerspace, yeah. we've got our own green screen, we can make videos and movies and trailers. <laughs> this isn't it. Is this the green screen? <laughs> yeah, this is not it. I quite like this colour. I like this. It's really nice. It's nice. This is the colour my apartment used to be in Manchester. Oh, yeah, I remember. I remember Ryan interviewing for um, a job in Manchester, and I feel like I would have been so sad if you got that. Oh, yeah, it was a little tumble down. I think you so I came back from the interview, and Katie was like, What was it like? Is it amazing? I was like, No. no. It was like the Harry Potter attic. It was like three. <laughs> classrooms on top of each other. Ryan drinks this all the time and he's hooked on it but I'm pretty hooked on this kind of thing as well so 
it actually says it's um, Singapore coffee, but then Ooh, it says okay. Japan on the back as well. Yeah, I think it may be Japanese, but I didn't see this brand in Japan. <laughs> you could do like an Asian coffee tour. Oh my god, we could do our top five. Is that it? Are we done with Q&A? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, just make a video. Are we done? Yeah, we're done. <laughs> And after eco tips, we're back to um, a Ryan one. Maybe Fortnite. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm planning how to make Fortnite into more <laughs> teacher use, and I've got some good ideas about using the map for coordinates, using it for like storytelling <laughs> and literacy. But actually, it's just a great teacher fail of me trying to play Fortnite. Ryan secretly and just then... wants to play Fortnite, but he's going to make it educational. Yes. Yeah. I just got back to my flat, I've been with Ryan all evening, we've got loads of stuff done, loads of stuff planned for four teachers. If you watched until the end or you enjoyed this vlog, please please consider giving it a thumbs up, subscribing to the channel if you haven't already, and leave me a comment down below because I'm going to reply to every single one that I get, that's my challenge. And I will see you guys on the next one, bye!